going on my friends I am so I'm so excited about this stream today because it is such a hot topic but it is going to be a doozy so I hope that you are ready to go because I mean I, I, I'm bringing it today so we are going to be talking about using countdowns and timers in our stream so what you just saw there, that was a perfect example of a countdown, right? We use a countdown to get started in our streams always, right? Okay, so this is going to be great. So here's what's super cool. So somebody, I need to pull this comment up. Uh, 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 uh. There it is. Supreme Gecko says, full disclosure, I despise timers with a passion. Help me understand the need for a timer. Okay, so there's a couple things. We will get into that, all right? We will get into that. So um, we are going to talk about a little bit about the strategy around starting a stream with a timer, but I want to let everybody know this show is not just about starting your streams with timers. We're going to talk about different ways you can use timers because a lot of people have like game shows or they want to do rapid fire Q&A and they love to display a timer for various reasons. We're going to talk about that too. So it's not just about starting your stream with a timer. It's about a lot of other things too. So hold on. I'm going to turn down my volume in my ears real quick because it's get, it was a little loud. Sorry. <laughs> I was blowing out my eardrums there. So, okay. So we are going to talk about that Supreme Gecko. So definitely hang out, hang out here. We're definitely going to do this. So, okay. The final countdown. I cannot sing. I apologize already. Hopefully everyone sticks around. 
because I'm not a singer, but it's okay, right? We all do y'all forgive me for that, but I just I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. Yeah. So Renee, welcome. You're watching us live. Good to see you. I'm excited that you are here. Uh Kate says she loves the lighting. Well, thank you so much, Kate. I appreciate that. I just realized my little light over here, I have a light over there. It's not on right now, but um, I might have to get up and get turned that on. But I'm actually getting ready to change things. Like today. Today, I'm making some changes. This is coming down. So a lot of you have seen my streams where I have a second camera angle. I moved the camera that was over here into the shelf. It's over there. I've got it all out of in the way now. I mean, it's out of the way, but I'm changing things up. So we're going to be making some changes today. My set is changing, so I'm going to make some tweaks to it. So, all right, we are, oh, I'll, I'll answer this question real fast, but let's keep our questions on topic today. These actually are that I'm wearing right now are made by Sure. I'm still a little bit in debate whether I like them, um, but they are clear Sure headphones. They run at about a hundred bucks. Um, I also in the past have used the clear Me audio ones. You can buy them on Amazon for like $16. They're pretty, pretty cheap, but that's what I got in my ear right there. So, okay, so we are gonna talk about countdown timers. Uh, and if you have a question, do me a favor, throw a cue in front of the question. That is what I see a couple coming in. I'm gonna go ahead and pin those so that I can come back to those because today that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're talking about using timers and countdowns in our streams. And so, but before we get started, I definitely want to um, say hello and good morning to everybody. I know we've got people watching from all over the world, uh, but this is our Ask StreamYard show. So some of you have been here, you're here every week. We do this every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Uh, what we like to do is we find either a question that someone has posted, we feature that question, that person, we send you a t-shirt. Other times we just grab a question that we know everybody's asking because we see it all the time. And we don't really always feel like it's fair to just pick one person, this question comes up a lot. So we're not necessarily featuring a specific person uh, in today's show in regards to the question asked, but we are talking about using timers and countdowns in your streams. And there are a lot of ways to do it, either both on the free plan and on the paid plans. And we are going to talk about, I mean, I think I've got like maybe six ways that you can do this today. Uh, some of which many of you probably aren't really aware of, you haven't thought of, or you didn't realize you could do it. And a lot of you maybe on the free plan are, have felt left out. Well, you're not going to be left out. We're going to talk about you too. We're going to, I got, I got solutions for everybody today. So it's going to be pretty fun. We're also going to be, one of the solutions uh, is going to be using the newest feature in StreamYard. The newest feature that many of you may not even realize is there yet. So we're going to be talking about that today. It's going to be a really great show. I'm really excited about it. If you have a feature request or feedback for StreamYard, don't throw them in the comments here. Uh, the best place for your feature request to get listened to, heard, put into the queue of options, ideas, is to go over to StreamYard.com forward slash contact. And actually, there's a form there you can fill out that will allow you to put your feature request in and our developers look at it and feature requests that get asked all the time. Uh, don't feel like just because it's been asked before that you shouldn't submit it because they're counting them. So if, if tons of people are asking for a particular feature, then they take that into consideration. So definitely that's the best place for you to put your feature requests and your feedback for StreamYard. Today, we're talking about countdown timers. And so today's topic, let's keep our questions related to today's topic uh, because I wanna make sure I have time to answer those questions, right? And when you're streaming and you're talking about a specific topic, then you should try to stay on topic too. So if you have questions that are not related to today's topic and you want help and need help, then the best thing for you to do is to go over to our Facebook group. So hop on over to the Facebook group. It's over on, all you have to do is search StreamYard community and it will show up for you and just answer the questions and they'll let you in. And that's a great place. You can search in that group. Your question highly likely has already been asked. Uh, so just search the topic and you might find some previous posts in there or just post your question in there and everybody will do their best to help you. But today let's keep our topic and keep our questions related to countdown timers and timers in your streams. Okay. All right, so let me check in on everybody. Let's make sure we're feeling pretty good. <laughs> okay, so I am checking out the comments really fast. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, okay, I'm going to put some questions in. The, I'm using our starred comments feature, with all, which all of you have. When you're in your StreamYard studio, you'll see a comment come up. When you hover over that comment, there will be a star, and you can absolutely uh, grab that uh, star, and it will put it into a queue. So Terry says... Can I run this to Zoom and YouTube? You can absolutely use StreamYard and stream to 
uh, YouTube, it, the API is all integrated. However, uh, with Zoom, it's it's very tricky. It can be done, but it's a little trickier. Uh, you can make it happen. I think we have a blog post all about that. So Terry, go check out our blog uh, and just search Zoom and you'll probably find the article about that. Okay, let's see. We've got... <laughs> okay, so some of you are asking about the purpose of timers, right? And I think that that's absolutely fantastic. I think that's actually a, a pretty good place to start. As I mentioned, as I mentioned though, we're going to be talking about using them as countdowns, but we're also going to be talking about using them in other like ways, right? Because a lot of people actually have other uh, types of uses for a timer or a clock in their in their streams. And so we're going to be talking about that too. I'm just getting some more questions here pinned before I jump in. You cannot stream to Instagram. Uh, so Ludwine Joe, we get this question a lot as well. Instagram does not allow third-party applications to stream to their applications. So no, you can't use StreamYard to stream to Instagram. All right, we're going to get back in. No more questions off topic today. We're going to stick with it. Now, if I have time at the very end, maybe if you have a question off topic, I'll stick around if I've got time and we can answer that question. But okay, um, whoops, move my little cable here, about unplugged myself. Okay, so we're going to talk about the different ways that we can add a countdown timer. Now, I just, as we started today's stream, you saw a countdown, you know, we were, I had a, a thumbnail up, I was playing background music, because background music is also part of all plans now in StreamYard. And so that was how we got started. And then I played a video. Now that video is uploaded right into our brand section. So if you're on any of our, if you, any of the paid plans, you can upload your own custom videos to your brand section. So that's how I did it to start the show. That's actually a common way that a lot of people are using countdowns is to start their actual stream. Now, real quick, why do you want to do that? Why would you do that? Because I know a lot of people have this question, right? A lot of people have this question. So, um, Kamal Tech Vlog, you're getting ahead of me. You're getting ahead of me. I see your comment. You're getting ahead of me. It's coming. It's coming. Okay, so, right? When you want to use a countdown timer for a few reasons. One reason is that, especially a short countdown timer, it's because you want to make sure, especially if you're multi-streaming. So today we are streaming to Facebook, a Facebook group, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. When you click go live, the moment you click go live, your face is not going to be on YouTube and Facebook at the exact same time. In fact, Facebook takes a little longer before it actually starts recording your live stream, whereas YouTube is a little faster. So what I mean by that is if I say go live and I smile and then I do this and then I do that, I may not even show up on Facebook until I'm th at this point, but I might be on YouTube when I'm smiling in the beginning, right? And so that countdown, what that does is it allows your videos to kind of, you're, you're ensuring that you are online in all locations, right? Now, another reason why a countdown timer is smart is because not everybody's going to be ready waiting for you to go live. Now, a lot of you are here ready to go, to go live with me. You're here. You, many of you were commenting before I even clicked to go live. Now, that is because this is a show we do every Wednesday. So if you're consistent and you have this consistency, you're going to have fans start to show up every time. Now, if you schedule your live in advance, you're going to that allows people to click on that get notification, which is going to notify them when you go live as well. However, what if that person's driving? What if that person is finishing lunch? What if that person is still pouring their cup of coffee, right? It's good to sometimes stall the stream a little bit to give people time to get settled and join your stream. So we actually have tripled already. We're 13 minutes in and we are triple the amount of people watching right now than we were in the first two minutes. So during the kind of me, had the th I had the thumbnail up, I was playing music and then I played that one minute countdown. We are at triple the numbers. Imagine if I had just started right away. Imagine if I had just started right away, right? Uh, a lot of people would have missed the beginning. So that's also another reason why a lot of people use countdown timers. Now, here's one thing I will say. When you are going to use a countdown timer to start your stream, it's it's definitely best practice to engage with your audience or have some sort of engagement going. A lot of times we'll pull a banner up that'll say, welcome to the stream, getting started shortly, let us know where you're coming, watching from. That gets people, they're, they're in the show, they're, they're talking, they're, it's kind of like they're waiting outside the conference room the doors haven't opened yet, but they're all out there. They're not just standing out there like zombies. They're talking to each other, hanging out. And if you're walking around or if somebody's walking around saying, handing brochures out or, you know, uh, programs for the show, then you're engaging them while they're waiting, right? And so don't just make people wait. 
it is actually best practice to engage with the audience. So give them a prompt, have them get in the comments, get them going, have them feel like they're getting ready for your stream. Now, you can absolutely, you know, timers can be different lengths. There's also a best practice, especially over on YouTube, uh, that it might be possible or might be an option for you uh, that you want to go trim out that timer after you've gone live. So when you go live, that countdown timer is going to be part of your live replay. And some it, people are very, very adamant that it's best practice to go cut that countdown timer out. So trim it out after you've finished your video. So you can go and edit the video on YouTube after the fact, trim that countdown timer out. That way, people who are watching the replay aren't having to skip past anything. The people that are live, they're hanging out with you. They're in the comments. They're, they're, they're being entertained. But the people who are watching a replay, they aren't there live. They don't get to be a part of the show. So they're, they don't want to watch a five or 10 minute countdown. Now, some countdowns are very different. Some countdowns are very, very engaging. Uh, there's a lot of tricks you can do in your countdowns over on my show. I actually have a transparent countdown because I'm using OBS virtual cameras, so I'm able to do that. I play music and I dance and it's just fun, right? And so that's you know one of those things. You can trim it on Facebook as well. Uh, f- however, Facebook is different than YouTube. So people are literally, more people will watch your replays on YouTube because it is an, a search engine as well. Facebook, not so much. So people that are doing research, for example, this particular live stream about using countdown timers in your live streams will be found by people. And if you are watching the replay, give us a comment right now on this video that lets us know you're watching the replay, right? People will be searching for this topic and they will find the video because again, YouTube is a search engine. Uh, Facebook, not so much. So it's very, it's a little more important that you optimize your videos for the replays over on YouTube, less important on Facebook. So hopefully that made sense, Kathy. I wanted to answer that question real quick while it was there, right? Okay. All right. I'm pinning a couple more questions that are coming up. Uh, because these are great. You guys are doing great. You're actually posting questions about today's topic, which is fantastic. So, okay. Um, Let me see. Just put a cue in front of your question for me and pinning a couple more. We'll get to questions for for sure. So uh, Smackdown Outdoors says, I started doing that. It might take up to 48 hours for YouTube to process the original live stream. Then you can trim it. Yes, he's right. And that is a great heads up because once you're done with your live video, it may not be available for you to edit just yet. And you also your live comments won't show up after you trim it. So if you're on YouTube and you want to keep those live comments displayed, if you trim the video, it actually will take away all those live comments. So that's kind of the catch 22 there for that. But thank you. That's a really good, um, definitely a really good thing. So Paul G says, uh, yes, he says, I'm into cutting out the long timer. First thing I edit out. Yeah, it's actually one of those things that people like. They, they enjoy it. There's another one. This is a great suggestion as well from Tom Brown. Uh, and I see a lot of people do this because they don't want to lose those live comments. And so what they do is they will go in and you can create those chapter markers, right? And those, t- those timestamps. So what you can do is you can edit your description and then right at the top, just say to skip past the countdown or to skip to the good stuff. And then you put a timestamp. That's actually a pretty good practice because as you get started in your show, you're probably welcoming your audience and doing some conversation, not really getting into the meat of your content just yet. And this is all going to depend on what your video is about. But that's another option where you can bypass that countdown timer. So it's a really great uh, suggestion from from Tom. So, okay, let me see here. I'm going to – after – Hugh says, can you edit the live replay in aftermarket software like DaVinci Resolve and then post it up to FB after the fact? Yeah, of course. You could download the video and edit it wherever you want. It's just a different video than that one that's up on YouTube. So if you take a video, if you download it, edit it, edit out the timer, whatever, and then upload it again, it's a completely separate video, right, than the original live stream replay. And so, and a lot of people do that. They will actually download their videos and they will take out snippets and they re-upload it. I think I talked about this, was it last week or two weeks ago? I talked about the Pat McAfee show over on YouTube. He, They absolutely do that with their show. So you can do that, but it is a totally separate, it's a totally separate post uh, for sure. So, okay, all right, here we go. So let's... Um, Yeah, so Kashini, it's Kashini says, I'm still waiting to be able to trim my first live stream. It's taking forever for the timeline to load in the YouTube studio. Interesting. Yeah, sometimes it can take, sometimes it doesn't take long. Sometimes it can take up to two days, like Doug said uh, earlier. So, okay, so here's the deal. I want to make sure that I get to 
teaching you guys how to use these countdown timers. So we talked a lot about strategy, right? And so if you're just now joining us, then you're going to want to watch the replay if you're trying to figure out why the heck you would start a stream with a countdown timer. We just talked about strategy, but I really want to spend a lot of time today teaching you all how to use or how to actually have these timers in your streams. And again, this is going to be for people on free plans and people on paid plans. Now, people on paid plans are going to have more options, right? So that is always going to be the case. But you don't have to have a paid plan to utilize a timer or show a timer somehow for your stream. So we're going to get to that here in just a moment. Okay, let me... Uh, <laughs> a really interesting question from Annette uh, at Purple Paisley Planner. So real quick, she says, will using the timestamp lose views? Anticipation is always fun. I agree. Now, not every viewer is going to want that anticipation. The timestamps actually might improve your views. So for example, Annette, think about it this way. If someone comes to your live stream and they just want to get to certain parts, if your video is kind of long, they may bounce. They may just be like, oh, this is too long. I, I This is just way too long. If they click on a timestamp, it absolutely counts as a view. Now, it might actually help you get more views because they might click around your video using that timestamp and might watch eight minutes of your video because they got to click on four little segments versus they started to watch and then they realized this video is too long. I don't want to wait around for her to get to the point. And then they leave and then they only watched one minute, right? So, but it will count as a view no matter what. But as far as watch time, using those timestamps can be a really good best practice to help your viewer get to the part that they want to get to and they're going to appreciate it and maybe come back for more. So we want that as well, right? So that's definitely uh, pretty important. Uh Yuda says we cannot trim on YouTube if the YouTube free music is added on our video. Okay, I've never, I don't use the YouTube music, so I certainly have never run into that. So, but I believe you uh, for sure. So that would be, I again, I believe you for sure, right? Okay, here we go. Let's see here. I'm going to jump into the first things that we're talking about. And if you are just not joining us, we are talking about using countdown timers in your videos. And so uh, countdown timers or timer, timers in general, right? Or a clock, displaying a clock, uh, because it, it kind of depends on what you want to call it. So the first one that I want to cover really quick is I want to cover that you can absolutely do this in the free plan. And the way that you do this in the free plan is you're just going to share your screen, right? And so literally sharing a screen and and I know that sounds pretty like basic, but you can absolutely do that. Now, if you have a computer like mine, I have two monitors. This one's looking fuzzy because of the angle, but I use two monitors. This is absolutely going to be make your life so much easier if you have two monitors because you're going to be able to share just a screen, still see StreamYard on your other screen. It's just a lot easier versus if you were only using one monitor or a laptop, you are going to have to minimize some windows uh, and share applications versus the entire screen. So there's that. That's oh, There's a whole bunch of tutorials on this and how to use it. In fact, there's tutorials in the knowledge base in the help center of StreamYard on sharing your screen and doing it effectively. So, but I'm going to show you guys what I mean by this. So let me um, pull up here. I think I have the right thing. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so sharing your screen. So let me let me show you what it looks like uh, in reality. Actually, I actually, I just realized I uh, closed it. Uh, earlier. So I'm going to show you what I mean, you, meaning you'll see what it looks like for the viewer. And then I will show you how to do it. Okay. That's what we're going to do. So we are going to share, I'm going to share my screen. And add it to the screen. And now you see a countdown timer. Now, because we now have background music, if you wanted background music for your countdown timer, uh, you can absolutely play the music like this. See what I mean? You got that? So yeah, so you literally can do this with the free version of StreamYard. You don't have to have fancy audio equipment or fancy, you know, you, you can do it on the free plan. And so here's how you're going to do that. So let me point out, um, let me point out, yes, Hugh, absolutely Canva. I actually, everything you see that I'm going to show you that I made today was made in Canva. So, and I can show you a couple tricks in there as well. So, okay, here we go. Let's see. Um, let me pull up the video. I actually pre-uploaded this video so that you can see this. Now I'm going to take the banners down so you can see the full video that I'm about to play, but this is how you do that. So this is literally uh, sharing your screen right here. 
All right, so literally down at the bottom, you share your screen. Now you have, you're gonna have a couple options here. You can just share an application. So this is literally a video just playing in the video player. So you can just share the app, okay, which is what I just showed you. And then you're gonna have those bars though. That's kind of the disadvantage of, now there might be other apps you can play that will be cleaner. Like you can play your video with different apps. It might be a little clean, cleaner, like QuickTime or whatever. Uh, but that I wanted to show. And obviously you can use all the different layouts that come with screen share. So then now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go to the window. I'm gonna share the whole, the whole browser, the whole uh, screen, I mean. And then I'm literally, that's the whole, that is the timer maximized on screen. And so now you can see, and if you, <laughs> once you hover off the app, it actually will take away all the controls, but I was just creating a quick demo for everybody. But there, I mean, maybe you didn't think about that, right? Like maybe you didn't think about actually sharing, just opening a video up and sharing it. And now with background music, you can have music playing during your countdown timer which was always kind of a challenge for some people before because they didn't feel they did, they couldn't create these timers with back with background music, right? And so now you can. You can just play the music right inside StreamYard and have your countdown going. Now, you can create the countdown in applications. You can go get one off of Fiverr, you know, .com. You also can um I mean there's free there's free downloads out there too for countdown timers. In fact, we have free countdown timers that have been posted. So if you go over to our stream, our Facebook group, StreamYard Facebook group, up in the pinned post, you will see a link where Julie Riley has been posting every month assets, free assets that we're giving you all. There are countdown timers. There's like 30 second, 60 second, and I think 90 second countdown timers videos that you can use if you want. So if you don't even wanna go to dis display or create one, we've given you some for free, right? So there you go. So Pond and Garden Sanctuary, you're, you keep saying, I think that you've put, either you or somebody else posted this before, I can't access Countdown Timer, not in my account. It's not in your account. Now, everybody has a 30-second Countdown Timer already in their account that's free for everyone. Um, but you have to have a paid plan to upload a video. So I'm not sure what you're referring to specifically. Um, but yeah, so that is the free way. That is absolutely the free way, right? Now, the other way would be instead of sharing a screen – you can also just share a file from your computer. So video sharing is also an option in that screen share. When you go down to click on share, like sharing a video that's on your computer. Now, why would you wanna do this versus the way I just showed you? It is gonna look a little different. Plus, you can control the timer, the video, right inside StreamYard. And it might just be something that you find to be a little bit easier, right? And so let me go ahead and turn this off. Let me stop this over here on my other screen. And then I am going to show you what this looks like. And then I'll show you how to do it as well, just like I did a minute ago. <laughs> well, we'll just, uh, oh, click on the right file, Mel. Click on the right file. There we go. Uh, and now I'm going to add this. And as you see here, this is a video that's on my computer. Now, this looks a lot cleaner because it doesn't have any of those video controls that you saw or any of the elements on my screen or the elements from the application. So this might actually be the way to go, right? Now, all you can, now what you can do here is you can control the timer. Like I can pause it and I'm doing this right inside StreamYard. And so using the screen share, then all you have to do is go grab it. I mean, add, add or excuse me, video share, not screen share. You just grab that video file that's on your computer. Now it has to be on your computer for this to work, right? And so you have it, you can add it, you can skip ahead. So I can actually change the timer if I want. So if I wanna say, let's reset our timer to one minute. Oops, I went too far, to one minute. And all right, and then I can change the view. So if I wanna say, all right, I'm gonna take this and I'm going to, answer this question, I'm gonna give myself one minute to answer the question, are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> and then I would go into my spiel and yada, 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 right? So this is actually one of those ways that I think it looks cleaner, I think it looks really great. Now keep in mind, this video is a full video. You would wanna think about the design of your video and all those things so that you can do it. Kathy says, how are you pausing the timer? Well, I will show you how I did this now. So I'm gonna play the video that shows you how you would do this. So again, you're down in your, you're, you're in your studio, go down at the bottom, and when you click on share, you're gonna have four, well, you'll have three options. Some of you might have four, okay, new feature, only for professional plans. 
And video share is what you would click. So you click on that, it's gonna add it. And then once you add it to the stream, it's gonna start the video. But you're gonna see once you hover over the video, you'll see some controls where you pause it. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. So down at the bottom, video file is what you're selecting. Select the file that's on your computer. And when you do that, it's gonna add it down backstage because that's how I have my settings set. Once I add it to the stream, it's going to start the video. Now, if your video has sound, the sound will also be there, but you can mute it. You can use that mute control or volume control if you want. And then once again, just like screen share, you have all these different layouts, all these different you know options for how you want it to look on screen. And so that's definitely really, really cool. Um, I love this again, because maybe it's something that you just had on your computer and you just want to just grab and you want to be able to customize and stop it, pause it, reset it. It's actually in my opinion, way easier than the original way that I showed you, which was sharing your screen and having the video playing on your screen. Plus, as I mentioned, it just looks better. It just looks cleaner. So I really, really do like this feature. Uh, it's also available to everyone. So same thing goes. If you play the video and it doesn't have any music, you can play background music as well. So you could share that file. Um, you could share it and then go full screen and you could turn on background music if you wanted to and it would play background music while you have your timer going, right? And so uh, I love it. So all that is is that's the screen share and then to get it full screen and nobody else on screen, it's in the solo layout, right? It's in solo mode. So, and then of course, this is the news layout, which I kind of like for timers and fun things. So, so yeah, so Kathy says, okay, I get it now. Thank you, good. I'm glad that made sense. Glad that was helpful. Okay, let's see. Um, <laughs> now let's talk about the next way, which is also a pretty easy way. And Pond and Garden Sanctuary follow up says, I can't access the countdown timer, not in my account. I have a paid account. So, Pond and Garden Sanctuary, if you're talking about this timer, which everybody gets. So all StreamYard users get that in their account. Everybody has that 30 second timer, uh, whether you're on a free plan or a paid plan. However, you can delete it. You didn't, you couldn't delete it before. So it's possible Pond and Garden Sanctuary that you've deleted that timer if that's the one you're referring to. If you deleted it, just email support and they will get you that timer to add it back into your account. Now, the other way to use a video with timer would be to upload it. You have to upload a timer of your own. So, but this one, every everyone has that one and it has sound. So when I click on it and play it, it's going to mute my microphone, right? Okay, so hopefully that clarifies that. All right, so, okay. We are definitely going to do this. So um, if you have a question related to today's topic, which is countdown timers and timers in your streams, then post it below in the comments and put a cue in front of it. That's gonna help me find it. If you have a question about something else, go post it over in our Facebook group and somebody will be able to help you or if it's a support issue or something like that, just contact our support team for sure. So we are talking about countdown timers today, which is actually super fun because it's a comment or a question we get all the time. How can I use countdown timers? How do I make countdown timers? How do I how do I incorporate them in my streams? And that's what we're talking about today. And so we talked about the strategy a little bit first about starting a stream with a countdown timer. But then we also, I just showed you two of the free ways where you can, everybody can use a countdown timer. Technically, I showed you three because we all have that 30 second countdown timer in there. But let's talk about a couple of other ways. I want to talk about a way that I feel like not a lot of people are aware exists, right? So I don't know if you all know this, but if you're on a paid plan, you can upload a logo to StreamYard, right? Did you know that you can upload a GIF file in that logo section as well? Yep. So I just think this is something that people don't realize they can do because they've just never had a reason to do it, right? Now that, that GIF has to be three megabytes or less, okay? So it does have to be three megabytes or less. Well, I take that back, it has to be less than three megabytes. So that can be the tricky part. That can be the tricky part about a video file or something like that, right? So you definitely have to keep it low. It, it's not gonna be like some super high-end, high-quality file. It's gonna be pretty low. I find it hard to make these myself, but there are people out there that make them. There are certain video applications that make it easier to make these. So now let me show you what it looks like. Yeah, GIF. And I say GIF, right? I say GIF, some people say GIF, I say GIF, okay? So that's, that's the way it works. Can they be transparent? 
So if you want to trans the GIF file, yes. So animated GIFs can be transparent. Yes, they they can be difficult to design. For example, a lot of people love Canva. They use Canva. You cannot make a transparent GIF with Canva. Um, you can in other applications, uh, higher end applications. As far as the lower end applications, though, not a lot of them out there make it easy to make transparent GIF files. So, but yes, the 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 the, the GIF file we upload into our logo section can be transparent. Now, with that being said. So Teresa's bringing up a great point here because another one of the ways that you can do it, I'm going to show it to you in the logo, but you can also, if you can, design a GIF file that has a, tr a, a timer in it, but it's transparent and you can upload it as a, an overlay. Okay. So same thing. It's got to be less than three megabytes. That can be difficult to have a GIF file that is going to have that kind of um, duration that is going to be less than three megabytes and not look like total crap, right? So that is definitely one of the tricky parts about when you're using it on your full screen. Uh, and I don't really recommend it. I have ha I have seen people do it. It doesn't typically look very good. I think it would look better if you use the screen share option that I showed you earlier than having it there. Now, if you want, there's a lot of ways that people do it. There's other ways to do it too. But if you're uploading a GIF into StreamYard, either in the overlay section or into the logo section, yes, it can be transparent. It just has to be less than three megabytes, which tends to diminish the quality. Now, okay, let's take a look here. Um, sorry, I'm pinning questions as I see them come because I want to make sure I can get to those. And I'll be getting to those here shortly, right? Okay, so... Um, <laughs> GIF Maker is a good app. Okay, yeah, I've actually never used GIF Maker. And I'm glad that uh, Chatty Cathy says GIF too. Cause that's how I say it, right? Okay, so let me... Um, yeah, stacked graphics animated. Thank you, Christian, for sure. Okay, all right. I... Uh, hear you on the file size. Uh, and that is something I would definitely encourage you to go submit as a feature request because you're not the only one who wants that file size to be larger so that we can get some different types of GIF files. Okay. Now I'm going to stop talking and show you what this looks like. Now this can look a lot of different ways. Now, the other thing I'll say is if you were here a minute ago and I mentioned to you that we have provided everyone with free graphic assets. Okay. Free graphic assets go over to the Facebook group, you will see pinned posts from Julie Riley that have them. Now they've added a Google doc that actually has a table of contents and you can just click on the links and it'll take you right to those graphics. So nice. These, there were some timers added recently and they are GIF files. So for example, here's a three minute timer. You notice it up in the logo section. So look up in the left, lower left-hand corner here of the stream. I just changed the Ask StreamYard logo. logo. I clicked on this one. This is a three minute GIF file that's counting down. It looks great. It looks fine. Now there's a black version and then there's a white version. Depending on your background, your layout, you might want to look at the black or the white. It just depends on the kind of contrast you're going for. Another one that's been put up there is this transparent one right here. So it's no, no back, there's no back color to it. These are just two examples of the free graphic assets we provided to you. These are um, GIF files that are less than three megabytes. You know what's funny I should do? Ooh, okay, I'm going to upload the same file that you're looking at, the same files that you, oops, I gotta pick the right thing here. Okay, I'm gonna upload those files that you see into, I'm just trying to see, decide which one I wanna pick here. We'll do the, we'll do the, we'll do the, we'll do the white one, okay. So I'm actually uploading these into the overlay section because as was mentioned earlier, you could totally just do it as the the overlay and as a full screen, like transparent countdown. But you'll watch here. I want you to watch something. What's going to happen when that timer is done? What do GIF files do when they're when they hit the end of their life? What do they do? What do GIFs do when they hit the end of their life? They restart. So that is the thing you have to keep in mind when you are using a GIF file is that it is going to repeat. Exactly. Christian says repeat. So they will loop. GIF files will loop when you play them. So there are some, there's some thoughts here, right? So keeping, keeping it around, that is correct. Chatty Cathy, the guy who invented the GIF actually says he wants it pronounced GIF, but it's, it's a, it's a worldly debate that will never be, it will never be uh, done, right? Uh, but you can set the time of each frame. Yes, you certainly can. If you want to get all fancy and custom, you, you certainly can. Okay. So 
Let me go up here. So to turn the timer off, you would just select it again. So again, you have to be on a paid plan, all right? So you have to be on our basic plan or our professional plan in order to upload your own custom logo, all right? So if you're on the essentials plan, which is a was a limited time offer, which is kind of like a plan in between our free plan and our basic plan, you cannot upload your own logos, okay? Now, you will, or may, I don't think you can. Ah, I don't think you can. I know there's always the watermark on there, the StreamYard watermark. But if you have the basic plan and the professional plan, you can upload your own logos. That logo file can be a GIF file. Now let's look at a version of one that I made myself. Now I made this in Canva. I will definitely show you how to make it. Now I did, uh, I am using a pro feature in regards to that timer you see, and that'll make sense. But you don't have to have a free, uh, a pro Canva Pro to create your own animated GIF file. I'm going to show you how to do it, so stay tuned. But watch what happens at the end of this one. Now, I've been intentional with this one. I remember that whole looping thing. I don't want to have to worry about making sure I click on it and no, don't it doesn't reset. So it says time's up at the end. I designed it this way to do it, and it's going to flicker one more time. And now I know it's done, and I'm going to – oh, see, I didn't get it fast enough. I was going to click it to turn it off. This is actually super fun. Now, why would you use a – countdown timer up in the corner and just up in the corner. Well, you can 100% have it displayed. Let's see. If I play this, show this, and then I play that, that's one way you could start your stream with a countdown timer if you wanted it to be small and subtle, right? But if you, what if you're doing one of those like Q and A's, rapid fire Q and A's, like I talked about, there's actually, I see a lot of people do these things where they, they go round robin and they give each other like a certain amount of time and they have to answer it or it's trivia or whatever. There's lots of things they do. This is a great option for you to have a little timer going and it's not overtaking the whole screen because you want everybody on screen and you want them to be showcased. The versions I showed you earlier with the screen share or even the video, they're very invasive. They take up a lot of space on screen and you and your guests are gonna be small. So if you want something small and subtle, then you can absolutely do this in the logo section, which is what I would recommend if you are looking for just a subtle timer to use in the middle of your stream. So I don't know if any of you realized you could do that. I wonder if you, you know, let me know what you think. Yeah, okay, hotkey for the logo section, 100%. I don't think it's one. Let me look. I don't, I know they added a few hotkeys. So I don't know. I think they've added a few hotkeys. Let me see. I know there's a go live and in broadcast now. Uh, I, I don't see one for the logo, but that's a great suggestion. They are going to continue to be adding more hotkeys. So those of you that have stream decks, they are definitely going to be um, adding hot, more hotkeys as we go. So you should be able to um, make this happen. Okay. Let's see. All right, awesome. So uh, seriously, this is fantastic. So I love the comments I'm getting in here. Uh, oh my God, Network said, so cool. So yeah, I don't think people realize that you can do that, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, Marina, thank you for clarifying. So if you're on an essential plan, you can upload your logo. So you could do this as well, but you are always gonna have that StreamYard watermark. Uh, and again, the Essentials plan was a one-time limited offer uh, that they did. That, that they did. So um, that's a good call. Make it your logo, make it your logo after, and then you could click it. So let's, we'll do that. We'll, we'll, that's a great suggestion. And then it's not like jarring or disruptive, right? So I definitely um, am excited that, I, I love it when I can show things that people aren't, they didn't realize, right? So, okay, so let's see. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. We're talking about using timers and countdowns in our stream. So do you guys want me to go ahead and show you that version and how I did that in Canva? Should we do that? We'll go ahead and do that really quick. I will show you how we made that in Canva because that is definitely going to be one of the things that people always want to know. So let's open up Canva and I'll go to this design and we're going to do that suggestion. We are definitely going to do that suggestion, right? Okay. <laughs> Yuda says, this topic makes our creativity improve. Well, good. I'm super glad that uh, everybody wants to see it. All right. All right. Janine wants to see it. Uh, Doug wants to see it. Let's go. Tom says yes. Kathy says yes. All right. We're going to, I'm going to show you, right? And Ra Rachel wants to see it too. Cool. Okay. Let me see here. So let me, I'm going to, oh, I have to remove this. Now I'm going to share my screen. Okay. I'm going to add it up. Okay, 
So what we're going to do here is I am going to, so this was the one that I showed you, right? Now, when you're going to design something and you know it's only going to be used as that logo, right? Then you want to keep it small. So this file size is 200 pixels by 200 pixels. That's it. So when you create a design with Canva, you can create uh, a smaller size. So you want it to be small. So 200 pixels by 200 pixels should be totally fine, right? So that's what that's one of the things that's going to help you keep that GIF file down, right? Okay, so here's what we have. What I did here, this particular design is, uh, well, let me just, okay, so it's solid background. I added a circle element, so a frame, okay? So if we go down to frames, circle, I can make it a different shape if I wanted to. So if I wanted it to be a different shape, oops, all together, you could add any of these, okay? So I did, you wanna grab a frame though, that's what's key here. So we'll just, we'll just go back to our circle because that's what we have. So I'm gonna add that, I'm gonna enlarge it quite a bit. In fact, it's pretty big over there. I'm gonna go nice and big here. And then I'm gonna center it, okay? So I move it, see the grid, it snaps. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over to videos, right? And you can search timer in the videos section, okay? Now here's where Canva Pro is gonna be very different than Canva Free. So Canva Pro has a lot of options. These have been added. When I first started creating my countdown timers, these didn't exist in Canva. These did not exist in Canva at all, right? But they're there now. There's actually quite a few for you to choose from. You have actual video videos. These super high-end fancy looking ones, be careful about those because those tend to have a large file size and you can't optimize your download in Canva. Like you can't change the frames per second or anything like that in Canva. You could potentially make something super fancy and then have somebody with fancy software basically res it down for you. But either way, be careful about those crazy, those really fancy looking videos like this one here. I would go with a basic one. Now, these are pretty fun, but they're, your colors is something to think about, okay? So I actually went down and grabbed, I found one down here that was purple. Oh, oh let me show you. If you go here and you don't want the pro stuff, then just click free. And now you apply the filters. And as you can see, you're pretty limited on your options. You've got a lot of these little clock videos and things like that. But you have this one that's been all over the place. This is actually was originally uploaded to Pixabay. Here's the thing that you can do, just so you know. I actually DM'd this guy and he made me a white version of this. And then I just sent him some like, you know, I sent him a little PayPal thing. There are timers all over the place. If you are on a pro plan and you have a timer that somebody else has made for you, you can just upload it and make and use your own. But this is here. So you could use this one, but you're like, well, I don't want a 10 minute timer. I just need 30 seconds. Well then click it, go up and trim it, trim it all the way. So type in 30 and then move this all the way over to the right. And you now have a 30 second timer, right? So well, or 25 seconds for whatever reason. I don't know why I did that. Um, so you can trim it so that it's smaller, right? But we don't want that one. That's not the one we want. We want to go back to our pro options because that's what we designed earlier, right? So back, uh, go to videos, timer. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the purple one. Where's the purple one? We've got green. Well, we'll just make it, we'll make it, uh, maybe it's because I did that. We'll make it orange. Oops, I clicked it. I need to drag it into the circle. So I've drag it into the circle. Now you could leave it like that, but as I, as you saw earlier, this is going to be really small on your screen. And so what I would recommend you do is double click, double click and make it larger. So we're going to need to actually zoom out a little bit because Canva's a little tricky when it comes to that. We're going to zoom out so that we can make that timer, the actual number, pretty big. So we're gonna, let's get it as big as we can here. So we are gonna fill that thing up, maybe just a little smaller than that. <laughs> we gotta put it right in there in the middle, okay? So we click away and now our timer's in there. Let's go ahead and make this a different color so that it matches a little bit better. There we go. It's okay, it's okay. Let's try this. Web picker, it's a nice little bonus plugin. You're all getting there. And we will now go over here 
We're going to change that background. Ah, select it. Change that background too. Now you're all going to want to know how I did that. It's a little plugin on your Chrome. Eyedropper. It's called the eyedropper. So now, look, our background matches. Matches the color of our, our countdown, right? <laughs> Great lady. Mind blown. Hey, this is fun stuff. This is what we this is the fun stuff we get to do, right? These are the things I love. Now, Hugh is saying you can kind of do the same thing in DaVinci Resolve in the fusion section. You can literally do this in any video, probably like high-end video software like DaVinci Resolve or Adobe. Certainly you can. However, I don't have I don't know how to use those programs. But I'm a master at Canva. Eileen Smith, what's up? She says, hello, beautiful people. Okay. All right, here we go. So we're going to keep going. So I used the eyedropper. So I, I matched the, the color of this timer. And now we're in there, right? Now, so let's just go ahead and take that out. So now we've recreated. I just showed you how I did it the first time, right? Now, let me zoom back in. Remember, remember how I said I want there to be more after the timer's done because if I just kept the timer, when that 30 seconds is up, it's it's going to literally immediately start looping. And I want time to click on it again to take it off screen, right? So, oh, that's right, Eileen, great reminder. I think that's a pro feature in Canva. She's right, there is a color picker now in Canva, an eyedropper, uh, I believe as well. I haven't used it, but she's right. There is that as well. Uh, so it's right inside Canva now, which is super fantastic. Okay, here we go. So let me see here. Um, okay, so I would recommend you add another page. So you would just go plus, right, right here. And it's gonna just add a blank page and it's gonna actually have the color, the same background. And then do something fun here, right? Now, great. A really interesting suggestion came from somebody earlier who said, make it your logo. This is actually cool, except there is a little bit of a limitation here. So let me um, let me just focus in here. So up in your in Canva, if I so let's say let me show you why what why I think this is important. OK, so if I wanted to end that timer and have it just ha OK, I have my logo up and then I start playing a timer. Right. OK here's the thing you see here my logo is transparent that wouldn't really be the ideal thing here so what you'd want to do instead is you'd want to have a full square framed logo displayed and then you can you can do the match so we're going to do that we're going to create that so that you see what the heck I'm talking about because I'm probably being really confusing right now because this is a really good idea for you so that it creates a seamless look and effect so let's just uh, do this really quick I need to make sure I have the right logo in here. I think I do. Ah, yes, I do. All right. So here's what we've got. All right. I'm going to go back and share bigger so you guys can see what I'm doing. All right. So I just added the Ask StreamYard logo to this file. Now I'm going to do something a little cheeky here. I'm going to get a little bit interesting. Okay. So we got it in there. It's nice and centered. Okay. Let me download this really quick. So we're going to download this as just a PNG file, page two. I just want the logo because I'm going to actually, I just want the logo file because I'm going to swap it out so that we can see what this is going to look like. All right. Put this over here. This is kind of fun. I'm going um, off uh, script here. I don't use scripts. Do you guys, did you think I use scripts? I don't use scripts. Come on, but I am going. I am going rogue here on my plan a little bit. So, um, okay, let me see here. Um, let me pull that in. I'm gonna upload this to the logo section. So that logo we just designed, well, it's the Streamyard logo with a bright orange background in a square. That's what we got. Okay, let me add it. Where the heck did I save that thing? Don't you hate it when you do that and you save something and then you literally are like, where did it go? Where is it? I thought I put it on my desktop. Oh, it's because it's called something. Oh, it's in there. Okay, got it. It's because I didn't name it, didn't I didn't name it strategically. All right, change the logo. So look now, see our logo. It doesn't look as great as a transparent one. So here's the transparent version and here's our square version, right? But if I was doing something, this is an interesting concept. So now let's talk about why we're going to do this. So let's go back to Canva. Okay. And we're going to, we've got this timer in here, which is super blurry for some reason. Now I like this whole time up thing. 
I, I really kind of like it. So what if I decided to do that? I could, let's rearrange these pages. So if you go over to text, there are some super easy like text treatments with awesome text effects. Um, some, of, some of these are pro features, right? But if you're on a free plan, you could just do like regular old text, no big deal. You can animate text now and all that. So that's all that was. It's really just like a neon... Uh, it's really just me saying time's up and it's like neon. So I just grab that. We'll say time. Time up. And then we'll delete this one. These are grouped. So I want to, I'm actually going to un, uh, uh, ungroup these. Delete that one. And then we're going to group these. And now I'm going to move it to the middle. Let's make it bigger right? That color actually kind of works. But if you wanted to go with maybe something more contrast, I'd probably go with white on this one. So time's up. We can, what just happened? It changed to blue on me. We'll just leave that in there, right? We're just going to leave it the way it is. Now I can animate it. And the animation was neon, I think. So again, you, you have some free animations and you have some pro animations. So keep that in mind as you're looking at what I'm doing here. Uh, where in the heck is that thing? Oh, geez. I don't know where neon is. Exaggerate, maybe? Oh, it's right there. It's right in front of my face. Neon. Boom. So it's going to flicker, right? So it's going to do a little flicker thing. So we have our timer. We've got our time up. And then we have the logo. Now, because the logo truly, like, the logo is probably going to be a very quick um, piece of the GIF file. So I'm actually going to duplicate this and I'm going to duplicate it again. I want this to stay. And if it's just a static little thing on the GIF, it, it goes away pretty fast. So now we're kind of ready to process this thing and see what's going to happen. So we've got all of it. So we could, we could preview it if we wanted to. Ooh, it says it's a minute. Oh, okay, cool. Let me actually, okay, cool. It is going to, it's going to be just fine. These are like, so I'm looking up here. Oh, you can't see that. I'm sorry. Let me take this off. I'm actually looking up here. So Canva gives you an estimated length of time. So when I add it, it goes to from 55 to basically a minute. So these are five seconds. So I, we're good. I can actually take these out and we'll just leave. We'll leave a couple of those up. Okay. We'll leave a couple of those up. All right. So make sure there's no animations on these. We should be good. Okay, okay. All right, so let's give this a test. Now, I could preview it if I want to, uh, which is always a good idea, but sometimes I just like to just, we'll, we'll, we'll check it as we go. Anna says, I could spend all day in Canva. So much fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. What? Yes, this will be available for replay, Natalie, for sure. Everything's always available. Uh, let me take care of that. Yep. Got it. Appreciate the uh, heads up on that one, Hugh. Took care of that. Um, <laughs> got it taken care of, guys. Thanks for pointing that out. You know, I appreciate it. Sometimes I can't see what the link is. So yeah, that's gone. Um, let me just delete those spammy things. My goodness. Delete. Delete. And there's a lot of them. Man, that was annoying. I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at Canva. Now, did you all watch that? Because I missed watching the, the thing to make sure it's going to look okay. Wow, there's a lot of these. I'm just deleting all these spammy comments. I think we're good now. I did use the block feature. I'm deleting all these right inside StreamYard, which is, again, another amazing feature for StreamYard is that you can just delete this stuff right inside the studio instead of having to go open Facebook, find that stuff, and delete it. Okay, cool. All right, I think we're good. I think I got them all... All right. Okay. Here we go. So now what I'm going to do is I am 100% going, thank you. I'm 100% going to upload this into the logo section. So we are going to see what this looks like. So right now, so let me just go back to me. Um, download. I got to download it first. Got to do that. So we're going to download it as a GIF file right inside Canva, all pages, because I want the whole GIF. So when I go to download, I select GIF, and then I want all pages because we're going to create – this is going to make a, a one big GIF. So we're going to download that, 
And when that's done, it'll take a minute. GIFs tend to take a little longer than regular files. Movies, uh, in, any kind of video or GIF file, it always takes a while to download in Canva. They, lo- Thank goodness they don't take long to upload in StreamYard anymore. They used to. So that was always kind of a pain. Okay, here we go. All right. I'm going to – I just downloaded it. So I'm going to go ahead and upload it now so we can see how this is going to look. Because I'm, I'm really curious because – um. I really think that this is going to be interesting, an interesting test. Again, we went a little rogue here <laughs> um, where I wasn't planning to, to do this, but somebody had a great idea. We were, we, were, we were showing this particular you know timer, the bug, which is you're uploading the GIF into the logo section. Uh, and at the end, it's going to loop. And so I have it do this little time up thing. Somebody had a really great suggestion that said, well, make the end be your logo because if you're displaying your logo – prior then you click the timer then it's going to play that and then when it's done it'll show the logo and then you just click back to the logo and it will almost seem seamless we're going to test that the only issue is is that our logo see if it's going to go to time's up or time up time up time up and then it's going to go away but i have to unclick it to get it to go off right all right so we now have our logo so we have a full logo that looks it should look just like i bet it is probably gonna look a little different uh, the, it, the the color might not be as vivid. That's my guess. But either way, it's going to be kind of cool. So we have our, our logo up. We're ready to start our countdown. So we're going to click on the countdown. It, it, it kind of goes away and comes back. So that will probably happen. But So we're going to let that play out to see what, what's happening. Yes, testing on live is fun, right? Testing on live is fun. Uh, so the any GIF file you upload into either overlays or your logo – or your background, you can put them in your background too. They have to be less than three megabytes. Now, you you can't tell how big a file is going to be in Canva. That's one of the disadvantages. And you also can't adjust the frames per second. Here we go. Time up. Logo. It's going to display next. Oh, see? It always does that. So when there, when there's a static image, when there's that static image, that happens. So... And that's a Canva thing. You can't adjust, you can't modify how long that those frames are going to be in the GIF for a static image. So it it kind of tricked us. It made us think it was going to work, but it def it definitely did not. It definitely. But the other thing we can do is when we see times up, then I'm going to click on the logo. Time up, boom. Oh, that felt pretty seamless. What do you guys think about that? So all I did is. Let me just show you guys. We're getting really live here. So I'm going to open up my screen share uh, video recorder to show you what I'm doing so you can see this. Cord. Yep. We don't want any audio. Okay. Record. Three, two, one. Okay. So we're in here. What I'm doing is I have it here. Click on the display, the, the GIF file. And again, when it gets to the end, you just simply click on your logo again and it goes back to the logo or click it again to undisplay it. Okay, so I'm going to <laughs> go save that really fast. And then I'll show I'll show you guys what I'm doing there behind the scenes. All right. And yes, uh, another application, if anybody wants to know, Screencast-O-Matic. It's dirt cheap and awesome. You can do so many cool things with it, like so many cool things. Uh, I am going to publish that video. It's going to save, and then I will share it with you all. Okay. Uh, Christian's doing tests in Photoshop. Love it. Yeah, you can do all this stuff. You can – I'm. It, what I would be interested to know is if you can do it in Photopea, which is a total free ripoff of Photoshop. I'm all about being scrappy and not having to spend much money, right? Can we use a timer with a green screen and chroma key to make it transparent? Hmm. Possibly. I've not tried that, right? <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not the only one that knows about Screencast-O-Matic. It's so awesome. So Janine uh, uses it as well. You would be able to create, uh, Rachel, you would be able to create uh, a GIF file in Wave. Wave is actually a pretty good GIF maker for sure. Um, that's all I'm going to say about Wave though. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and play this, upload the video so you guys can see what I was doing with the logos. Because some of you might be confused, like, how is she doing that in the logos? Let me add the video clip. 
and play it for you so you can see. So this video is just was me literally clicking around so you can see how I'm using the logo bug or whatever you want to call that thing up there to use those GIFs. So here we go. So as you can see up in the logo section, I have multiple things uploaded and you just click on them. And when you click on them, they're going to change. And so I click it and when I'm ready to switch back to the logo, I click it and it switches to the logo. Now turn it off, you just click it again. That's how those custom logos work. You can upload multiple files to the logo section. You do have to be on any of our paid plans, essentials, basic, or professional. So you, you can't upload your own logo if you're not on one of those plans. So that's how I did that. Okay, I want to, he's telling the GIF not to loop. Okay, cool. Okay, so let me see. Can you adjust the slide timer of the logo in Canva to make it longer? You can, but that static image, it like overwrites it. So it even was telling us that it was the GIF was gonna be 45 seconds, but it wasn't at all. It like, it was gone. Uh, it was absolutely gone. Yeah, I, I thought that was gonna be the case. Always loops. GIFs always loop when you play them. They will always loop in StreamYard, uh, no matter what. So that's just a setting. That probably isn't gonna change, right? Um, can you do all of this testing offline? 100% Pamela. In fact, two weeks ago on this show, I showed all the ways you can do all the testing, all the practicing you want without going live to a public audience. You don't even have to be live. You can just go into your studio. And I did, I covered that totally two weeks ago. So go watch that. If you go to the Ask StreamYard playlist on YouTube, you will find that video, that stream that I did. We, we really geeked out on all kinds of stuff. That was a really fun stream. And I think a lot of people had a lot of fun. So, um, you can, but when you, de so Chatty Kathy, when you export the file, it overwrites that timing thing. So it has to have an animation. It has to have an animation. So that would be your way around to get your, your logo to stick up there. Okay. So let's, that was fun. Was that fun? I mean, I thought it was fun. So we were just talking about using GIF files. Now I uploaded this file into my overlays. So you can absolutely upload a file in the logo section as long as a GIF file as long as it's under three megabytes the same thing goes for your overlays right so this file that was given to everybody for free we're gonna see how this looks I bet it doesn't look good I bet it's not gonna look good oh it looks like crap hi hi there <laughs> okay so not the file as is that we provided to you, not really what I would recommend, but you see that you can use a transparent GIF file in the overlay section as well. Just like all these fun things that we've provided to you as well. The confetti is a transparent GIF. It's going to loop. So as you notice, the confetti goes down and then it restarts again. So fireworks, we got fireworks for everybody, right? We have puddles that flies across the screen, super fun. I always like to wait till he goes off and I try to time it just right. Come on, Puddles. Get out of there. Get Go and get. Oh, I missed it. See, he started to come back. So those you could create a timer and upload it as an overlay as well. So that was the third way that I wanted to share with everybody about how you can absolutely do these timers. Okay, so, okay, I want that confetti. You can get the confetti. So Split Rock, uh, 323. Go over to our Facebook, right? Facebook. Um, pay, or group, sorry, Facebook group, go to the Facebook group. And those are, those, those assets are there. So go to the pinned um, comments or the pinned posts. You'll see Julie Riley has made lots of posts up there about the monthly assets that we're providing to you. So go join our Facebook group and you can have that. It, it looks like Duck Hunt. It kind of does look like Duck Hunt actually. That's funny. Okay. I sold Nintendo players. All right. So here we go. So let me keep jumping in. Oh, I'm so glad you jumped in. Squee, squ squids, squids. I was, I thought it was said, said squid easy, but squids. Uh, okay. So let me talk about the fourth version. <sighs> okay. I told you guys that one of the ways I was going to share with you was absolutely utilizing a brand new feature, brand spanking new feature. Let me close a couple things down, including Canva. All right. So please bear with me. I'm probably going to do a deep dive on this new feature on next week's show. Okay. So we could be here all day long. Let me do a time check. Let me, let me just make sure like somebody's house isn't burning down or anything like that. Okay. I'm good. Um, 100%. This is a brand new feature and I will do a deep dive next week on this. I, I'm very, very certain of it. So come back next week, 11 a.m. on Wednesday, but we're going to share a virtual camera. 
Now, just so you know, the virtual camera is outside of StreamYard, okay? If you use, if you have OBS, if you have Minicam, if you have Ecamm, if you have any application that allows you to turn it into a virtual camera, then you might wanna consider this next option. Now, this option I'm gonna share with show you requires you to be on the professional plan. The professional plan, all of you on the professional plan now, absolutely 100%, if you go down to screen share, you're going to see something new. You will see something new, right? If you go down to screen share, or where it says share, excuse me, you're gonna see slides. You're now gonna see extra camera. Oh, I got goosebumps. Extra camera is now supported natively inside of StreamYard. All right. This is your ability to add an additional webcam to your stream. Again, next week, I'm going to go on a deep dive of this. We're going to geek out on this all over the place, right? I'm going to show what this looks like, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. But again, the virtual camera part is a separate thing. There is no, there is not a virtual camera with StreamYard right now, okay? 100% over there. Like it's a separate application. So if you have OBS, as I said, Ecamm, if you have Minicam, if you use any of those applications that let you turn that application into a virtual camera, pay attention. I see another really great option. And yes, this will work with that too. So can you use an iPhone as an extra camera? You absolutely can, Kathy. We will talk about that next week as one of those options. You have to just make sure that your camera is, you have to have either an app or a capture card that will allow your uh, phone be recognized as a webcam. That's the trick, right? Okay, here we go. I'm going to show what this looks like. I'm going to add the camera. I'm first gonna show you what the heck this is. So I'm gonna share my other webcam. It's a Logitech Brio. And I'm gonna, I just now, I went into share and I just added this Logitech Brio to my stream. And now it's on screen with me. This is all part of the professional plan. So if, if you have thought about upgrading and you want that extra camera, boom, here you go. So you can toggle between the views. There's my, there's my Brio right there. And then I'm back here. And maybe now I want to go to this view and I want to like showcase my behind the scenes and talk about my setup, right? So I talk about my setup, but hi, I'm still here on screen with you out to the right. Big. You can still see my face. What if I was... You could put a camera top down, do a demo, but you can still be looking at your audience as well. This is all, you can do all this inside StreamYard on the professional plan as long as you have more than one uh, webcam. Now, you can create a timer, use one of those applications I talked about, and share that virtual timer, virtual camera, and add it to your screen this way. So let me go ahead and take myself off and remove this. Ooh, okay, cool. Uh, let me, I'm going to open up OBS and I'm going to have, I have a scene in OBS that already has, um, the camera in here or the scene of a timer in here. Just going to pause it. So it's there ready. Okay. So I'm now going to change that that second camera to my OBS virtual camera. And when I do that and I add it back to the stream, hi, there's a, there is a, that's the, that is, this is OBS, what you're seeing. This is happening in OBS. I'm gonna go over to OBS, I'm gonna start that timer. And so now I have another way to share a timer where I can get really custom. I can change things on the fly if I want. There's a lot of things you can do here if you wanna share that extra thing. But the timer thing, I thought, well, why not just go ahead and talk about this brand new feature as the fourth way that I wanted to share with you of how you can do it, right? So you can change the view. The views you have with your extra camera, so the virtual camera, are different than the views that we were looking at before. The views we were looking at before are the same layouts that we have for sharing screens, okay? These views with the extra camera are the same views and layouts you get when you have two people on screen. Look at it that way. Think of it as you and a guest. And this is also another fun thing you can do to practice having guests and toggling between views. So you have different views. You have solo view of just yourself. 
You can go solo view to your guest or your timer. You can go to this layout right here and you can go to our zoomed out layout again, right? Now you can also go to this one, which highlights this, this is a spotlight version. If you want to spotlight the timer and you be out to the side, all you have to do is drag and drop inside StreamYard to switch those. And now your virtual camera is your main look, right? So that is key. And this is also important. So there, there are no, there is no audio. That is correct. So the creative lady, the virtual camera won't have any audio, but if you want audio playing, like if you wanted this to just be the way you started your stream, then what you'd want to do is just go, go grab some background music, right? So if you go to your brand tab, everybody has this all the way at the bottom, grab some background music like that. Why not? There you go. So you can play music in the background music. Uh, so you could get music that way. Uh, but that, that audio piece is 100% out of convenience because 100% you're going to have lots of issues. If you did have audio coming in from that second camera, we aren't even going to get into that. Uh, can I use this virtual camera with another computer plugged into to my main computer via HDMI? That's a great question. As long as that, if, as long as computer A can recognize the devices on computer B as webcams, then I wouldn't, then I wouldn't think there'd be any reason why you couldn't do that for sure. Um, I wouldn't think there'd be any reason why you couldn't. Um, okay. So we're talking about countdown timers and timers and using them in your streams. Uh, so if you have questions about that, post them in there with a Q. Okay. So <laughs> Cornelius Hill says, I was trying to figure out the extra camera. Well, hopefully now you, now you saw how I did it. Now I'm going to actually share now with you. I'm going to do what I did before. Uh, I'm going to share a video that shows you how I did this. So many of you are like, oh my God, what is she talking about? Extra camera. So let's show you how I did it. Now, here's the video. So, oops, let me take this off. So let me start that video over while, so you can see everything. Okay. Here's, here's how you do it. So again, you go down to the bottom. You have to be on a pro plan, professional plan down to the bottom. You're going to see share and you're gonna see video or extra camera. You click extra camera, you're actually going to go ahead and select your virtual camera, go ahead and share it. I then, I had to then open OBS after the fact uh, so that it, OBS didn't get wonky on me. And when I did that, I opened it up on the other screen, I drag it over here so you can see. And then I turn on the virtual camera and now you notice that that webcam feed is now what is on OBS. And so that is how I did that. That's using OBS. Now, other applications have virtual cameras. You would be able to do this with any application that has a virtual camera. Turn that virtual camera on. You can add that virtual camera as your extra camera in StreamYard now. That is 100% another way for you to add the timer. This is if you had the timer going inside of your, your application. Now, there are other ways that we could do this. I wanted to show you a few of the ways that I feel are, are some great options. Another trickier way you could, uh, you know, yes, you could totally use your phone. And when you share your phone, uh, you have to, um, be thinking about, sorry, let me back up. There are ways that you can mirror your phone to your computer and you could use the timer and the app on your phone. 100%. That's op an option for sure, but you have to have the third party app that lets your phone get recognized or lets it mirror and all the things, right? So, or if you're on a, um, a Mac, I'm sure that's easier to do. So there are certainly other ways. I just wanted to show you some of the options. Now, something else, if you're on a PC, and I'm sure Macs have this too, um, you can. there is actually a timer app. So if you go to, if you type timer, it's going to say alarms and timers. I'm going to pull this up on my screen. And if you remember earlier when I did the screen share, so again, this would be a free way for you to do it. If you wanted to share, go to share screen, and then have the app open. When you go to that window, open it up, add it to the screen, and here you go. So it should change a little bit as I change my window up. So if you notice here, this is another way for you to have a timer on screen that doesn't require you to go make a video and all the things. You might just have an app on your computer and all you have to do is share it. And you now have a cool looking 
app or a cool looking timer. So that's an option for you too. So my point with sharing this is simply to say there are a lot of ways you can do this. So you can get really creative. I just wanted to show you some of the ways that maybe you that would help you add that creativity, add more more like ideas to how you want to do this, right? And we have um, you know, a video on our YouTube channel about starting your stream with countdown timers that, you know, shows you various ways you can do it as well. But we wanted to cover this topic too, because we've not really talked about, we, we've talked about starting streams with countdown timers, but we've not really talked about using counters and clocks, you know, like count, like give yourself 30 seconds to answer a question. Okay. Rapid fire time, uh, you know, Q and a with your guests, whatever it might be. Uh, those are some fun ways you can do it too. So yeah, you can, there you go. It's much easier on a Mac for sure. So you don't have to have a crazy uh, app. I use reflector on my PC, uh, but it looks like you can simply do it with quick time on a Mac. So certainly an easy thing for sure. Okay. So, um, so for the timer, can we upload custom music? I'm on the basic plan. Well, you can't, right now you can't upload any custom music to StreamYard. They, I believe that is a feature that is going to be explored. Uh, I do not know if they'll be doing it. Not sure, uh, but 100% they will be, um, they have, they've talked about it. They just wanted to kind of get this started. Uh, and before they start adding, they don't, that's what I love about Dan and Gage is they don't want to just make massive changes all at once because then it kind of is disruptive for everybody. So they like to do things in layers. And so having that background music all in their standard is great. Great way to get started playing around with it and then add in maybe the option to do, to upload it custom. My guess is it will be a professional plan feature though. So if you're on the basic plan, when that comes out, maybe it's another reason for you to upgrade. Uh, but again, Again, I don't know for sure if that's what they're going to be doing. So, okay. So, that's a great question, Hannity. And as I mentioned, uh, I need to kind of think through that question, but I'm going to totally talk about the extra camera next week. So, we're going to talk about using the extra camera, uh, why you would want to use the extra camera, maybe even talk about some options for the extra camera. Because as we mentioned, if you don't have an extra webcam laying around, if you have a phone, there's a way to make your phone a webcam. And so you might be able to do this right away, even without having an extra camera sitting around. But we're going to be talking about that next week. So we'll be diving in for sure. Let me grab um, some questions that are from, from forever ago, uh, for sure, that I think are, are going to be great. Uh, let me see. So, um, okay, this is a really great question from Jonas V. Jonas V. Jonas ZV. Jonas ZV. I bet it's Jonas ZV. I don't know. Um, hopefully I'm, I'm getting that. Okay. What about, what about the countdown timers that YouTube and Facebook add to scheduled live streams anyway to avoid doubling up on countdown timers? Let me see if I can pull up an example so that everybody knows what he's referring to. But yeah, so if you schedule a stream on YouTube, actually, I know I have one on my channel. So, okay. Why is the thumbnail not working? Uh, all right. Let me share my screen. share screen. For whatever reason, I apparently forgot to upload a thumbnail for my own scheduled stream. So slap my slap my hand. Here's a scheduled stream that I have for tomorrow. Okay. Now when you click on that, when you click it, if you don't have a trailer or anything, then it's just going to go right to the thumbnail. Again, for whatever reason, I apparently forgot to upload a thumbnail. But if you notice here, it says live in 65 minutes. Oh, did I say tomorrow? Yeah, that's later. Live in 65 minutes. When you get closer, this actually changes to a countdown. It starts counting down, like live in 33 seconds, 32 seconds. I don't think you have to worry too much about that because honestly, I think everybody kind of gets it. I always start my stream with a static image and then I go into my countdown. My countdowns are very different. They are very, very fun. Um, I play music, I dance, and I use OBS so that I can have a transparent countdown. But um, I don't think you really have to worry about the redundancy there. I think everyone kind of gets that, okay, hey, you know, it's live. Now it's live, but it's not, the show's not starting. But you don't have to, I wouldn't over, like I said, I wouldn't put a lot of focus on that. I wouldn't think about it too hard and too much because you should be okay. Mm -mm -mm. Um, okay, sorry. I'm looking at some of these questions that we totally already answered and talked about. Um, so, Wotley, Watley says, will you be adding more starting stream timers in the free plan? Maybe a one minute timer. Uh, that's a great thought. I would definitely submit that as a feature request. Uh, but 
that's the free plan. So anybody can go download those free timers that we created uh, a while back and upload them into your paid plans. But if you're on a free plan, you are limited right now to the 30 second timer that's in there. I don't know if they plan to add anything else. Um, Witty Wittier says, does the countdown timer music need to be non-copyrighted as well? Yes. Anything, any audio files, any sound files, any video clips even, you have to make sure you have the proper usage rights to use them, regardless of whether it's the countdown or not. The other thing that I know some people say is they use whatever they want during their countdown because they're going to go trim it out later. You That video can still be taken down. Um, it actually might even, it can get, you can get like YouTube can actually stop it midstream. Sometimes the AI works fast enough that they can see right in the moment that you're using something you're not supposed to and it can shut it down right away. I would definitely not risk it. I would definitely always, and anytime you're using any kind of music for anything at all, you definitely want to make sure that you have the copyright uh, rights to that for sure. Um, <laughs> I don't know if Kamal Tech Vlog is still here, but he asked this question so early and I said, you're getting ahead of me. You're getting ahead of me. And that is absolutely uh, what we talked about at the very end of today's uh, little lessons is how you can use the OBS virtual camera. So can you add a scoreboard on StreamYard? So you totally could use a score. There's scoreboard apps out there that you can have on your screen and you can share it. You can also now with that extra camera feature, I know that a lot of uh, people are streaming like high school games and games. They'll ha they want to have a camera on the scoreboard at all times so that the scoreboard can always be viewed or so they can kind of toggle back and forth. Now with that extra camera, you could have a camera as long as that camera is plugged into the same computer that your mainstream is with, then you can absolutely add that, right? So you can add that camera that way. I have not tested it with two with two computers. I have a feeling it will still work, uh, but I haven't tested it yet. Again, we're gonna take a deep dive on that next week. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so Gary had a question. So can you cover the timing of the countdown timer and an intro and the difference between the two. So for me, for a live stream, I definitely think having that countdown timer um, starting before you go live, I mean, it just depends on preference. So I think what Gary's talking about is some people have like video intros, like they actually have like, it's almost like a little, like a, like when you watch your favorite show on TV, there's like that start or on Netflix or whatever, there's that starting point, right? And it's like the same every time uh, for whatever reason I have like Grey's Anatomy in my head, but you know to expect it. A lot of live streamers use the same practice. They have this little video. It's kind of like a little, um, you know, sizzle reel or something and they play it at the beginning of their streams. So some people will play that and then they play like a 30 second or a 10 second countdown and then they start their stream. Other people do it the other way around. They have a little countdown going and then when the countdown ends, they play a sizzle reel and then they're on screen. I re really don't think it matters so much. It matters probably the duration of your sizzle reel um, and also just your preference. I kind of like the idea of the countdown first then the sizzle reel personally, but again, it's all going to come down to preference. That is a good question though. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, I'm just reading through the pinned questions I had from forever ago. Uh, <laughs> okay. So Gary, I love this question. Would it be rude to use a timer for a guest when you've given them a specific amount of time to present? So this is actually, again, it's going to come back to personal preference and preference for you. I know that um, a lot of people have talked about their struggle with literally they say, I cannot keep my guests on time. So I tell my guests, hey, we have a hard stop at 1230. Uh, you know, make sure you wrap it up. They'll be in the private chat commenting and the guest just keeps going on and on and on. And they feel like they have to interrupt them, whatnot. I have heard people say that they wish there was a feature where you could have a timer inside the studio, like backstage, so that your guests can see how much time they have. I think it's super cool. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I think it's a cool feature idea. You could potentially use something like you know the timer in the in the logo section as like that way to kind of but I will tell you something a lot of people aren't even looking at the studio preview window like they're looking in the camera they're not even looking at it so I mean like half the time they just they don't see the stuff you're pulling up on screen they don't see it so it's going to come down to those pre-interview tech checks and training your guests letting them know hey 
you need to make sure you keep an eye on the private chat. You'll see if you see a little highlight there, it means I'm talking with you. Please check it, whatnot. You can also do a, you know, have some prompts with them. But I don't know that it's necessarily rude to have a timer on when they're presenting and talking. I sort of feel like it's, yeah, like Tom says, it's not rude if it becomes part of your shtick, right? I do. I think that, I don't think it's, I think it just comes down to how you want to do it, right? Um, it's just one of those things. Uh, Hugh, I don't know about Droid Cam. I really have no, I don't know anything about it. I uh, wish I could answer that one for you. Okay, so Tom says, I've been uploading video cl clips with timers. I really like the idea of adding it to the logo area. Yeah. I mean, it's the logo. It's going to have to be a GIF file. It's got to be an. It's got to be a GIF file and under three megabytes. That's the trick, right? Um, okay, let me get to a couple more questions here. So, if you're joining us now, we we went we went all in today. So we talked about using timers either for the beginning of your show or even mid show. But I first started out with demonstrations on how to do it even on a free plan. So yes, you can do timers. Uh, you would want to use the share screen or the share video on your computer feature to be able to display a timer. So we did talk about in the beginning. So if you're just not joining us, go check that out. But Hugh asked that question. And yeah, you can, you can totally do it on the free version. The paid plans are going to give you more options to do more uh, and get a little bit more, I don't know, what's the right word to use here? Savvy or uh, extra fancy, maybe? Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Okay. Um, let's see. So Copper uh, John's Beard says, on Ecamm, you can speak to your guests while being in the background while the timer is going with sound and all the audience can see you. Is this possible streamer? So what Copper Jones means is if you have your, if you can, you can configure Ecamm to basically have sound going out to the stream, meaning to your audience, but then you and your guests can still hear each other and talk to each other. Keep in mind that Ecamm is an, a great application, but it is an application that you install in your system. It has a lot of features. There is a lot more to Ecamm. Um, StreamYard is probably never gonna have some of the features Ecamm has because StreamYard's goals are different. We are trying to serve a different type of audience. We. Are, I'm definitely pushing Dan and Gage to integrate with Ecamm. I hope it happens this year. Hope it happens sooner than later so that Ecamm users can absolutely also stream with StreamYard and multi-stream with StreamYard. But as of right now, it's probably not going to be an option. Uh, never say never, but I know that that is an extra complicated thing, an extra layer. And I love how Dan really, really, really is passionate about making sure that the application stays robust and awesome, but yet simple as well, because we don't, we really do enjoy serving people who, you know, just want to be able to go stream and not have to get overwhelmed with all the features. But yet, if you're savvy, you can, as I've shown you today, you can do a lot with StreamYard. You don't, it, you don't have to have fancy software. You can do a lot of really cool things. You are limited with some of the things you can do, but there's a lot of ways you can bolt applications onto each other uh, as well. So, but as of right now, that's not a feature. Um, so you wouldn't be able to talk to your guests while the countdown's going in the beginning. Okay. So, hi, Jordan. I see you. Hello. Uh, okay. So yeah. So hopefully that answered your question there. Um, I definitely think that, that when I was approaching this topic for today, I literally was like, oh man, I could probably like show them so many different things. But here's what I did. I wanted to show you the things to get your kind of creative minds going. I wanted to show you how you can use an application like Canva or any other design application to create timers and countdowns and things. I wanted to show you ways you can show these and display these on screen using StreamYard. I just think that sometimes one of the things I really am passionate about doing is pointing things out, helping you maximize features, but doing it in a way that also says, well, if I can do that, then I would be able to do that. And so I really would love to hear what other ideas you have in the comments of this after you know the, we're done with the live and hear how you've actually incorporated some of these, but maybe even incorporated these ideas you saw in different ways, right? And so I definitely want to hear how you're taking your creativity to the next level because there really are a lot of really great things you can do. And it's, I mean, the, the options are almost endless. I won't say they're endless because 100% there are, but you can actually maximize everything as well. So Okay, let me just check in and make sure there aren't any more. Um, <laughs> okay, Tom is mentioning you could do a group chat um, 
on your phone as well, and you totally could. So you definitely can have other ways you can communicate with your guests uh, instead of in the studio with StreamYard. Um, and he's right. There's a lot of apps out there that you can do that. You can even get on a, a phone call. You can get on a FaceTime call with them if you want to. So, all right, my friends. Well, listen, this was super fun. I super duper appreciate all of you being here live with me as you always are. We will be here again next week. As always, we'll be here at 11 a.m. for the next episode of Ask StreamYard. And as I mentioned, I'm pretty certain that we are going to talk about StreamYard's newest feature, which is the extra camera feature. Now, this is on professional plans only, but... Maybe I'll maybe I'll show a couple of tricks for those of you on the free plan too of how you can actually have an extra camera. Not as easy, not as f- convenient, uh, and definitely some quirks to it. But you can also find a way to get an extra camera on there. As I said, I love to be the masterful person of hacking through everything and being scrappy, but not crappy when it comes to creating these things. So we're going to talk about those extra cameras next week uh, on the Ask StreamYard show. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss the notification when we schedule that stream and when we go live. I can't wait to be with you next week and talk to you about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for today and uh, get ready for all the fun things going on uh, over on my channel. So <laughs> that's what's that's what's going to happen. So we're going to do that. Oh, I love this comment. Doug says, I wasn't going to watch today because I really, I don't really need timer help, but there is always a nugget or two of info I end up using. So super happy to hear that. I definitely appreciate that. That's always my goal for sure. So all right, my friends, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to say bye and let y'all get on with your day. And uh, I don't know. We'll see you next time. So see y'all. What? 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 What?